Okay, this is a review of the BT Meter 770 series. This is the 770N. Uh, it's an auto ranging meter, true RMS, 6000 count. Uh, it's going to update about three times per second on the screen. It's got an auto backlight and a handy indicator and some other mechanical features that we'll show off in just a second. So uh, if you're shopping for multimeters, you've probably seen there's a million videos on YouTube. This is yet another one. Um, I probably watched, I don't know, at least five or six hours worth of videos of multimeter reviews and then ended up picking one that uh, no one had reviewed before. So, but I decided to gamble. I found this on Amazon for $25.99. So for less than $30, I think we get a pretty good meter, but let's have a look at it. Comes in a pretty handy zippered case. Not too shabby. Now when you first unpack this, I've unboxed this a couple of times already. When you first unpack this, everything's wrapped in plastic. Um, the only plastic I've kept is the bag for the temperature probe, and that's what the temperature probe looks like. We'll get that out later. Basic probes. More on those in a bit. And the meter itself. Oh, the instructions is really just a folded sheet. Mostly all your spec information, some, I don't know, rudimentary instructions, all in English. Enough of that. Okay, there is the meter. One handy feature of this meter, or one feature that I like anyway, I don't know, your mileage may vary, is uh, it's got these mechanical covers for the different ports. And what you'll find is, as you cycle through different modes, it's going to change to show you where the probe should be for that particular feature. So you can't mess it up. You can't have your probes in the wrong place. Um, you can't harm the meter by sending the wrong kind of signal in. It's going to protect you from making those mistakes. Now, if you're a seasoned veteran, that's probably going to be a little annoying for you. For uh, a hobbyist like me, I find that kind of reassuring that it's going to protect me from damaging the meter um, or doing something silly. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind with that is because it is a mechanical switch, uh, let's see, if we put, let's just put the probes in real quick. So with the probes in, um, it won't let me turn the dial to any of the settings where the mechanical covers need to move. Uh, that's also a handy feature. That means if I have, happen to have these probes hooked up to something, I can't cycle through a mode that's going to damage the meter as I pass through it. So the only way to actually reach these other settings is to remove the positive lead, and now I can access them and put the positive lead back in. So I find that a good feature for someone like me who's a hobbyist, uh, like I said, for seasoned vets who know that know what they're doing, um, that, that might get a little annoying, but I don't know. You have to try it for yourself. Okay, the leads, fairly basic lead. Let me make sure I get this on camera. Okay, um, fairly basic lead says it's rated for a thousand volts, says it's cat three, thousand volt rated, 20 amp. You know, who knows? They can print whatever they want on these things. Uh, meter comes from China, it is not UL listed. Um, so I don't think an independent body has actually verified any of these ratings of a thousand volts or 750 volt max DC. Um, I don't know. But again, for the hobbyist, it's probably just fine. Uh, you're not going to be plugging this into any high voltage AC systems. Okay, uh, let's get right into everybody's favorite, the continuity test. So probes right out of the box were disappointing. Um, let me prop this up on something so it's a little easier for you to see with that camera angle. Does that help? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, Probes are a little disappointing, disappointing right out of the box. Uh, oops, I gotta put it on the right mode. Um, but they cleaned up really well. What happened was these things came wrapped in plastic, but they had so much, uh, I don't know, factory grime and residue on them that cleaning them up with some alcohol pads made all the difference in the world. I was super disappointed when I first tried them out, but now, I'm really happy with that. Nice and responsive.
And for what I do, you know, for benchtop, uh, low power DC stuff, really 99% of what I do with my meter is continuity testing and, and some resistance testing. So having this as a nice, reliable, quick response, I'm really happy with it. So here we're, the shop got all romantic all of a sudden. All right, so here we are working in the dark on something and check this out. Automatic backlight. You don't even have to think about it. Don't gotta do anything. Just does it. Now who knows how long the battery will last. I don't really feel like draining it down, but it's a handy feature to have nonetheless. It does have an auto off feature, so I'm pretty sure this thing will shut itself off after, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. I guess I could look that up in the paperwork and see what it says. Another handy thing though that I like is, I don't know if you can see down here, um, there is a indicator light on the dial. So it also shows you not only the backlight of the numbers you're reading, but there's a little LED that shows you what setting you're on. I find that really handy. And you might not be able to pick it up on camera, but it illuminates the dial enough that you can read the setting, which is perfect. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, actually we're gonna keep it, we're gonna keep it romantic a little bit longer. We're gonna do the LED test. So what we're doing here is we've got it on the diode setting and I wanna see if it'll light up these LEDs and also tell me their forward voltage. So there it lights up the red LED and we get a quick reading. That's great. And this one's a slightly stronger white LED. Let's see what we get there. Yeah, it lights it up and gives us a reading. So there's a fairly decent amount of power in the diode test, which is great. Let's find out actually exactly how much. Okay, we will set this to volts. And we can see there's about four volts in the forward voltage for the diode test. Or, sorry, four volts coming out of the meter for the diode test. So you'll light up an LED that's four volts or below. That's pretty handy. All right, let's look at capacitance. This should be 100, oh wait, that's the, okay, so it should read out to 100. Yeah, close enough for this kind of component. Let me short that out and do it again. So yeah, not the fastest meter in the world. Good enough for me. While we're here, let's do a resistor. We want that guy. Hey, it's pretty fast. And what I like is you see how the decimal point is kind of dancing around a little bit while it's taking its reading. That's the auto range function. I like that because it shows you that the meter is doing some work and uh, so you're not just looking at a blank screen wondering if your meter is going to take a reading or not. It lets you know that it's active. 1001, 1002, yeah. Hey, it's not, not the fastest, but again, $30 meter. Can't complain about that. It has a non-contact voltage function that'll read voltages up around the top of the meter. Handy for testing if a wire is live or not. So we're gonna test it with, this is just a five volt line coming out of a wall wart. It's energized right now, so let's see how close we have to get to get a reading. It's pretty good. For a DC line, that's pretty good. Okay, enough of that. Let's check a heavier AC line. Let me make sure this is actually energized right now. Yes, it is. Okay, so this is a fairly substantial extension cord in festive holiday white. And it doesn't do as well with all that insulation. But the function does work. So if you're checking to see if an outlet is live or a wall switch is live, this will do the trick, but this is not strong enough to help you find wires inside of a, of a wall or anything like that. The proximity is fairly close for a heavy insulated wire like that. 
So let's just have a look at the case itself. Um, plastic case, obviously. And what uh, is normally a soft rubber casing is actually just sort of a softer plastic. But it's, it's just plastic all around. It's not really a, a gummy rubber of any kind. Um, let's take the probes out. Have a look at the back. Uh, on the back you have your stand. Oops. That works pretty well. One-handed test. Yeah, reasonable. I can press buttons. Doesn't fall over. Doesn't have a lot of mass though. So, you know, you tend to push it around while you're using it. Um, I don't tend to use a meter this way, so uh, seems fine to me. Um, one thing I do find kind of goofy, comes with this big magnet on the back. And the idea is, is that, you know, if you were working it somewhere near a metal work surface, you could, you know, stick your meter up there and it would just hang there for you. Um, but I find the magnet that they used isn't super strong. Uh, this is my scientific test method. Um, can't, can't quite hold its own weight. Um, so I don't know what the point of the magnet is. Uh, but handily, there's just one screw to remove it. So if it starts collecting all sorts of junk, um, tools and stuff on your workbench, one screw takes the magnet right out and, uh, it'll be out of your way. Okay, to get inside, we've got to remove two screws. So let's do that and have a look inside. Make sure I've got it powered off, yeah. So there's the insides. Um, you can see there are two glass fuses. I guess I can get my lighting back. Does that help at all? Hopefully that's in pretty decent focus. Anyways, there's a window here where you can access the two fuses. They're just glass fuses, not a ceramic um, safety fuse or whatever those are called. Just a, your basic glass fuse. Again, this is not the kind of meter that I would use in, in a high voltage dangerous situation. Uh, and 9 volt battery. So yeah, I would love to have um, cylindrical batteries in there, um, but the 9 volt does just fine. And also, when you first get this out of the box, the 9 volt battery is in the case, but is also wrapped in plastic and not hooked up. So your meter does not work out of the box. You've got to crack it open and actually plug in the battery. Once you get the cover off, there's just two more screws in order to get full access. Now, a professional YouTube reviewer would have a powered screwdriver to make this go faster, but you're stuck with me. Professional YouTube reviewer, right here. There we go. This cracks open. And that's all we're really looking at inside. We can get a good view of that without some glare, maybe. Um, not a whole lot on the board to see. A couple of fuses, this odd red wire bringing power in to one side of this fuse. Um, there's a big solder joint over here that I'm not crazy about. Let me see if I can get you a good view of that guy. All right, this is about the best I can do as a close-up on the board, I'm afraid. Um, there's not a lot to report. Solder joints seem fairly professional. I don't see any signs of uh, hand soldering work. Um, but like I said, there is one solder junction. Hang on a second. Sorry about the shaky cam, bear with me. Okay, there's one solder junction right here that strikes me as odd. Now again, I am not a professional engineer, um, but a big blob of solder across two pads on a board is always kind of an odd sign to me right there. Uh, so again, I'm not going to use this for any high voltage stuff, but for hobbyist work, um, I trust it just fine. Okay, look at that. The workbench got all romantic again. We're going to have a look at the temperature feature. Um, right now it's reading 62 degrees Fahrenheit. 
out here in the shop. That seems about accurate. It's a little chilly out here. Uh, I noticed when I was shopping for multimeters that a lot of them came with a very thin wire thermocouple. Didn't seem like it was going to last very long from the pictures and from some of the reviews that I saw. Uh, I was kind of intrigued. This one comes with more of a meat thermometer style. It's fairly substantial. It doesn't have the longest cord in the world, but it does stretch. Um, and it seems, I mean, it works. You can see there, temperature's going up and up and up. It's rated up to, I think, well, over 1,000 degrees. So this is good for just about anything you would need to test on your workbench. I'm happy with that. We'll let that fall back down. And I humbly submit that when a multimeter is reading a temperature, it's not a thermometer, it's a thermometer. So, that's what I say anyway. So that's the BT meter, BT770N digital multimeter. And I've got to say for $25.99, it's a fine hobbyist meter. Uh, for the type of amateur student level hobby work that I do, it's going to suit me just fine. I was a little worried, you know, buying a sub $30 meter um, without really knowing much about it, but I'm, I'm really happy with the purchase. Uh, you get all the basics, of course, of voltage and amperage and resistance. Uh, you also get uh, capacitance testing, diode testing, transistor testing, a frequency readout, non-contact voltage, some temperature stuff. Um, it really covers the gamut of everything you'll need as a hobbyist. It makes some bold claims about high voltage and high amperage tolerances that I don't think anybody should ever really test. I certainly don't plan to. Um, but for benchtop use, I think this is sufficient. The leads, as we said, need a little cleanup when you first get them out of the box. And then the continuity test is fairly responsive. I'm happy with it. You can always invest in a better set of leads, but for stock leads right out of the box, they're sufficient. Um, so yeah, if you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out my video. Uh, if you're shopping around for multimeters, I'll link some of the videos that I watched uh, in the description below, and a link to this one on Amazon, of course. Um, so that's it. Happy multimeter shopping, and thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.